video, I'm going to share with you five mindset books that changed my life, and they might change yours too. If you're excited to get started, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell. Book number one is Think and Grow Rich. When it comes to food, I always start with the worst thing first, but because I know everyone doesn't always watch to the end of a YouTube video, I'm starting out with the chocolate. Think and Grow Rich is like a Bible to me. I bought this thing used, but the cover is literally falling apart because I've read it so many times. Every time I read it, it makes more sense to me. Napoleon Hill wrote the book and Andrew Carnegie planted the idea for the book in his head. Carnegie thought that the magic formula that allowed him and other people to become rich should be available to everyone. Just as the title says, this book helps you think and grow rich. If you were to ask 10 different people if they'd like to be rich, I bet most of them would say yes. But when it actually comes to doing it, most of them never would. You can't just say, I want a million dollars and think about it forever. You need to figure out what you would give in exchange for that. Are you going to start a business? What are you going to give your customers? How will that all work? How long would it take you to do that thing to make a million dollars from it? Those are the type of things you need to start thinking about and figuring out in order to actually make a million dollars. But most people don't do that. They think about wanting a million dollars and then go watch TV instead of getting on Google and asking questions about how to do that. The key is that you need to really desire the thing that you want. So much so that it almost becomes an obsession. You need to think about that goal every single day and you need to take steps toward that goal every single day. When you're thinking about this desire to be rich every day, even if you don't remember everything you learned consciously, things are making it to your subconscious. Eventually, after learning from mentors and reading books and thinking about things every day, you'll start getting ideas that pop into your head and basically show you the path that you need to follow in order to get where you wanna be. It all starts though with a very strong desire. There are so many good things that I could talk about from this book. I'll probably create a video just on this book one day. So if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments. I had to read Think and Grow Rich like three times before it actually started to make sense to me. And I've read it probably five or six times in total. But the next book I'm gonna talk about is much easier to understand. The next book is The Richest Man in Babylon. This book is a parable that teaches you how to build wealth. It takes place in Babylon, obviously, and there's this guy who builds chariots, but he's sick and tired of working all the time and never having any extra money. A friend of his from childhood has a lot of money, so he decides to go ask his old friend how he became rich since the friend was self-made and he didn't come from a wealthy family. The rich friend was very charitable. He helped out his family. He spent a lot of money on himself, yet he still had extra money that kept growing and growing. So the rich friend teaches the poor friend exactly what he did to get there. Basically, he learned to spend less than he earned, he learned how to learn from experts, and he learned how to make his money work for him. The book is easy to read, it's just a story, but it teaches some good lessons about building wealth. I highly recommend this book to anyone who wants to be better with money. The next book I'll talk about is good for anyone who wants to communicate better. This book is How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is a very popular book. The title of it sounds a little conniving, but the content isn't that way at all. It teaches you how to communicate with other people better. What it basically comes down to is being interested in other people, asking them questions, thinking about what they want, making it about them, not you. That's how you'll make friends and get people to like you in life or in business. If you think about it, that's what being a friend is. It's caring about the other person and being interested in them. When I read this book, I already knew most of the things that I read, but we forget about these things. The author actually recommends reading the book often, taking a highlighter to it and leaving it on your desk to reference when you need to. Because we can't just learn these things once and then always be perfect at it. We forget, we go back to our old habits. So by checking in with this book often, we can remember the good practices that we should be using. As an introvert, I found this book very helpful because Communicating with others is not my strong suit, but it's even good for extroverts. Just because you like talking and being around people doesn't mean that you're a good friend or you're good at communicating. So no matter who you are, I recommend reading this book. The next book isn't about money or business, it's about getting rid of fear. 
Fear can hold you back from taking action to make money or to start a business. This book is The Universe Has Your Back by Gabby Bernstein. It's interesting, this book reminds me a lot of Think and Grow Rich. The thing they have in common is the unconscious mind. Gabby Bernstein, the author of this book, guides you through meditations and meditation is a way to tap into your unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is where your epiphanies and bright ideas come from. It's also where your brain can connect to other brains, or at least that's what the book Think and Grow Rich says. You can connect with other brains from reading books and watching videos, so in a way, my brain and your brain are connecting right now, just not in real time. This book helps you turn fear into faith. I wasn't sure I'd find this book helpful because I didn't think that I experienced fear, but I did. I was afraid of being judged. I was afraid of people not liking who I was. But when you realize that sacrificing who you are just to make people like you doesn't make sense, you can start to let go of that fear. No matter what, everyone's not gonna like you. So whether you're you or you're not you, there's gonna be people that don't like you. So it's better to just be who you are and you'll attract the people that like you for you. So you most likely have fear even if you don't realize it. Gabby Bernstein's book, The Universe Has Your Back, will help you cleanse your mind and get rid of that bad mindset. The last book I'm going to talk about today is Rich Dad Poor Dad. If you're into real estate at all, I'm sure you've heard of this book on Bigger Pockets podcast, which is a real estate podcast for those of you that don't know. Like 75% of the guests say that this is their favorite real estate book. And that totally makes sense because this is a great book to get you to start thinking about money differently. And real estate is a really good method to build wealth. This book is the story of Robert's two dads, his real dad who was highly educated but poor and his other dad, his best friend's dad, who was not very educated yet he was rich. I've read that this whole story about the two dads is made up, but even if it is, the lessons you'll learn are still valid. Basically, most of us who grow up not being rich learn habits that make it hard for us to become rich. We've been taught that the way to make good money is to get educated so we can get a good job, but at a job, you have to trade your time for your paycheck. So the amount of money that you make is always limited by the amount of hours in a day that you can work. Now what the rich know is that if you make money from things like owning rental properties, investing money in the stock market, or owning a business, you don't really have a limit on what you can make, and you're more, more secure when you're in charge of your income. With a job, you could lose it at any time. It's all up to your employer. That doesn't mean that you can't have a job where you work from someone else, but it's just smart to also make money in other areas to take control of your finances and be more secure. There's a lot more that goes into this, but the book is really easy for anyone to read. It's all explained very simply through using these examples of what the rich dad does versus what the poor dad does. There's no industry jargon or anything like that. It really helps you think about money differently and how you can make your money work for you instead of you having to always work for your money. So this is a super great book for anyone to read. I was hesitant to read it at first because I was not interested in personal finance, but it really helped me get on the path to financial freedom. So I will forever be grateful to this book. So those were the five mindset books that changed my life and if you read them, they might change yours too. Have you read any of these books? If so, what was your biggest takeaway? Do you have a favorite quote from the book? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thanks for watching, and I hope to talk to you again soon.